back to the closing moments of our interview this week with Senator Lamar Alexander. So what is next for you? I'm going to turn the page in a book that's been a very good book <laughs> and see what's in the next chapter. Um, I'm not sure what that will be. I'll be right here. I'll live in Blount County uh, within about 30 miles of six generations of ancestors where they lived and died and are buried. Um, and, and we'll see what comes. I heard a, I heard a uh, newscaster once say about a basketball player that if he quit trying so hard, and let the game come to him, he'd be a much better player. Maybe I'll tw quit trying so hard and let life come to me and see what happens. Will you slip uh, into a, a plaid shirt like you've done in the past? Again, I know you still have a few. I do, and they fit. Yeah, sure, when, when it's colder. <laughs> <laughs> well, Senator, anything I should have asked you that I didn't? No, the, the only thing that, that, that I think about is not just my... 18 years in the Senate, but I've had the people of Tennessee have given me the privilege of having eight years as governor. So I can look back over 40 years and, and see our state. I mean, I can see it when we didn't have an auto industry, when we were the third poorest in average family incomes, when the Knoxville area didn't take as much pride in what I like to call the Oak Ridge Corridor. Uh, you know, we were proud of football and the mountains and TVA, but we just didn't we just overlooked the fact that we had this huge concentration of brain power here, and now that's becoming much more a part of our pride. So I see a state that's higher family incomes, auto industry in every <laughs> every uh, every county almost, uh, among the best four-lane highways in America because we've worked on that. And, and the other good thing I see is that for 40 years we've had a succession of leadership. You know, Governors, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, all of whom worked together, made handoffs from McWhorter, Bredesen to Haslam, for example, or Alexander McWhorter, all taking the attitude that Speaker McWhorter said when I was elected 40 years ago, they, the press said, well, what are you going to do with this new young Republican governor? And he said, I'm going to help him because if he succeeds, the state succeeds. And that's helped our state a lot and it would help our country if the same sort of attitude prevailed. Uh, you talked about the great things about this this state and um, this community in particular. Is there anything that still keeps you up at night that you worry about? About this state? About this state or the state of the world? Well the most d dangerous thing in the world is, is, is nuclear weapons, um, uh, our nuclear weapons the possibility that a small weapon in a suitcase of a terrorist could find its way into New York City or any other part of our country. And we have to remember that. That's our biggest threat. That's our biggest threat. I think we've seen this year uh, that another big threat is, is, is bioterrorism. Um, look at this virus that's just Im Im immobilized our country and the world even though we were reasonably well prepared for it. I mean, that's what the New York Times said on March, the first week of March, that the United States is as well prepared for this virus as any country in the world. Yeah, look at what's happened. So we need to step up our preparedness, both for nuclear weapons that might slip in and for the next virus. Jared Diamond, uh, who's a great student of diseases, said that one thing that's different about COVID-19 and any other virus is the jet plane that people can travel all around our country and around the world and spread it. So he said that means the next virus, the next pandemic could be next year, which is why I've been pushing all year to focus on being prepared for the next pandemic by keeping manufacturing facilities ready to produce vaccines. Uh, by keeping state public health offices fully funded, by keeping stockpiles full of the protective equipment we need between pandemics. We go from panic to neglect to panic, and we lose our focus. And while we have our focus, I want to make sure we're ready for the next pandemic as well. Anything else that you'd like to say, Senator, before we let you go? 
No, I just like for people to know what a privilege it's been to to, to, to do this. I, I I really really feel that, and I hope there are men and women of any age who who aspire to be a United States senator or city councilman or a woman or school board member like my dad was for 25 years here. It's, we, we still have a remarkable country and a remarkable system of government that most people in the world would love to have. Appreciate your time, sir. Thank, Thank you, you for John. your service.